Is it fair to say that you sometimes get a little nervous or at least somewhat uncertain when it comes to having a conversation, whether it's a podcast or off a podcast? Let's talk about it because you're either in one of two camps, either you're completely flustered, flabbergasted. You say, I have no idea what to say on a podcast, or maybe you consider yourself naturally social person. And by the way, I envy you, but if that's you, then you're probably looking for somewhat of a structure or a step-by-step -step solution when it comes to a podcast. Now, my name is Robert Plank from DFY Podcast, and I want me and my team to run your podcast for you and do all the technical details. That way, all you have to do is just show up and make the connections and do the networking. And podcasting is a great foot in the door strategy. I guarantee that there are customers, former customers, peers, employees, mentors, et cetera, who would love to just spend 20 or 30 minutes with you on a Zoom call where you talk and you record it and you reminisce about the good old days and you ask them about their accomplishments and they expel or expunge life lessons. And the end result is that you got some content out of the deal and then they were able to promote themselves. They got themselves some PR. So let's talk about what this is, okay? And I tried for many years doing this thing called a podcast where I sat down in front of a microphone and sometimes recorded videos, but I had a lot more fun when I brought in other people. It was like, instead of struggling for what content to make next and researching, I could just have someone on and they were the research for me. Plus an added benefit of it was not only did I get the content, but I also was able to talk to this person and that's led to friendships, it's led to sales, it's led to affiliates, it's led to joint ventures. And so having other people on your podcast is a really great idea, especially if you find yourself perhaps running out of content or need some fresh new ideas. And it's probably not a good idea to invite maybe like a direct competitor, but someone else in your space, in your industry, in your orbit is a great idea. And what we're talking about here is for you to run a podcast and for you to use a service called Calendly where they can choose from some of your office hours. If you say that I'm available from Monday through Wednesday, 9 to 12 a.m., then you click on, you set this up and then it synchronizes with your calendar, such as Google Calendar. And if you have any appointments within all that space, then it does not make those time slots available. And then when someone does set an appointment with you to be on a podcast, it adds it to your calendar It adds it to their calendar. It sends some reminders. It creates a Zoom session. So all you have to do is show up and record. And then you have this sort of conversation about a 20 minute or so conversation where you are doing a few things, right? Number one thing is you're solving your audience's problem along with your guest. So you have a real estate podcast and maybe you bring on like a lender and a real estate flipper and an apartment renter and the apartment renter comes on and maybe you say there are people out there that are struggling just getting started with apartment rentals or they're struggling to scale or get past their first handful of apartments or they can't even make their first deal. It doesn't even matter who we're speaking to exactly, just that we're speaking to someone and that we wake someone up and we just have that in our mind that we're solving a problem. Because if you're not solving a problem, then what's the point and where's the conversation going and how do you know if it's over? So we're just solving a problem and that really comes in the format of the most important thing is encouragement. And then the second thing is maybe like a little tip or two or just something to get someone started. But then because this is just a 20 minute call, there's only enough time to really get that listener like a little bit satisfied, a little bit reassured, and maybe a handle on the steps and the things to look out for. But then item number three is then for your listener to find out more about your guest. So that is the path we're looking at here to wake up that prospect, to speak to their fears, to demonstrate some knowledge and value. And then step number three, to then go and send someone off to their website. And so now the question is, what the heck do I ask my guest about? Well, it's good on both sides, because if you are the host of your show, then you should actually speak as little as possible. You're the one to set up your guest for these really excellent answers. And so you have a, a somewhat easy job of just 
asking the questions and waiting for their responses. And then if you're a guest on a show, it's also easy because you're delivering similar material every time and you're completely welcome to be a politician and give a politician answer and say, I know you asked me question one, but I'd rather answer question two. And what is this sort of podcast Zoom interview session like? You get the meeting scheduled, you show up, you fire up the Zoom room, and you've probably been in a Zoom room before, right? Post-pandemic, you've been at Zoom for sure. And what happens is you're there and it's just you and you're on a camera just like this. And then a box appears saying such and such has joined the meeting room. Do you want to let them in? You click yes, let them in, and they see their screen, their microphone starts working. And now what do you say at this point? The guest might be a little nervous and they might want to fill space and make some small talk before you hit record. Then I would say that your goal as the host is to start hitting that record button within two minutes or so of meeting them. And this probably goes contrary to some advice saying you should do either like a pre-call or get to know your guests. Get to know your guests while you're on the show. You don't have to spend all this extra time doing it. And I was reading some articles recently about late night talk show hosts, right? And they have an actor on their show. And sure, they'll do a thing where like they'll go and meet them in the dressing room really quick, but just to get to know them for the first time. But it's not like they're spending hours on in, in that dressing room saying, I'll say this, then you say that, then I say that. There's something to be said about the, the natural flow of conversation. And hopefully, ideally, your guest is here wanting to talk about themselves. And people love talking about themselves, especially if you throw in a little bit of flattery, a few sort of compliments. Now, what sort of we're saying, first of all, get recording as quickly as possible within the first two minutes. And my script, if I'm thinking off the top of my head, is more along the lines of this. Our show is this and our audience is that. And what I'm looking for is this. And I want to have fun and go about 20 minutes and then promote your website at the end. Ready to start? And that on its own counters most of the reasons why a guest would want to delay. You're saying this is the Scaling Secrets podcast. Our, our guests are seven and eight figure entrepreneurs, and I'm looking for stories about your failures and successes. We'll go about 25, 30 minutes for this session, and the last five minutes, we'll make sure to promote you and your website URL. Ready to start? And in all the over a thousand interviews I've done, the only real time a guest has trying to delay me is when they say, I want to understand your audience more. And should I talk about this or that? And I think it's really healthy and worthwhile to be fast and loose and to be a little, I don't know, whimsical, happy-go-lucky and say, let's just get started. Let's just see how things go. One of my top life lessons was not expecting every conversation to be perfect. And for many years, I had this problem of if I had even a successful conversation with someone, I always think, man, could that have gone better? I should have said this. And now I thought of this joke afterwards. But what woke me up about this idea is that the thing that you think was good about that conversation, the other person might not, or even your audience might not have liked that. Versus something that your guest said that you didn't really think was great. Maybe your guest or your audience think was great. So you don't know. Your own perspective is a little bit tainted. And you need to get this conversation started, hit that record button, and get right off the bat as fast as possible and, and just get the conversation recorded. And so let's talk about really quick about what questions do I ask or what sort of structure. And my exact kind of questions that I would ask is I would, number one, ask someone for an elevator pitch of sorts about what their current passion and focus is. I would then move on and ask, where does this expert see where people are stuck in their industry, right? You have an apartment rental expert on and you say, what holds a beginner back from renting their, their first apartment building? And then along those lines, ideally, maybe they've said something that perks you up or you can pick up the thread. And it's really delicate. It's really important here to not over relate to your guest and to not one up and to not completely derail. So if they say something, my go-to is they say have all these answers. And if there's one thing that 
you thought was really smart, even if it was a basic idea, and especially if someone said something that is both smart and simple or basic, pick, on, pick up on that and say, hey, I really liked that you said X. And I liked it because it makes me think why. And if that naturally leads to a follow-up question for you, that is a, a good flow of a conversation. And I might even ask, it might come up like how they're unique, right? If we, if they give the elevator pitch about someone, they might say, I teach people how to rent apartments, but only 32 units and above. And I might say, wow, that's crazy. People have all kinds of differing advice. Why is 32 units the magic number for you? Just as an example. And then we go along there. And as we're getting into maybe it's the midway point of our conversation, I'll be panicking again, saying, oh no, what questions do I ask? And a problem is if you ask a question and then your guest is saying an answer and it seems like they're getting closer near the ends. And then if your brain is too preoccupied with the next question, you won't be listening too much to their answer. Now, this is why it's helpful, first of all, to be on video, if at all possible, that way you have a YouTube version, but also you can read body language and you can tell if your guest seems to be close to the end of their answer. And hopefully maybe you can even pick up on each other's excitement level. And you should be like over the top excited because there's a thing called resting B face. For, and there, there needs to be a good acronym for that, but resting B face, which means that by default, you do look grumpy and frowny. But if you're like this, like you're on TV, then you look okay because you look energetic and excited and you want your audience to look excited too. And it's fine if it feels unnatural, just smile more than you think you have to and be on video. But at this point in this midway conversation, if you're worried about running out of questions or you're not focused enough on what they have to say, then your get out of jail free card is to ask for a success story or case study. And I say this is your get out of jail free card because say you're having this problem I'm mentioning where someone's answering and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I think next? You can continue to focus on their answer. And if nothing comes to mind, your blank default go-to question is, and I usually phrase it like this, since this is the podcast, we love stories and we love to dive deep into past successes and failures because that's where we can really learn from. So what interesting success story or case study about you and your journey and your adventure comes to mind? Something along those lines. Just ask for a story and it does not have to be like the most life-changing story or the, the reason for their existence, but just some kind of past failure that was stressful, that was emotional because we can relate to past stress that's relatable. And that, that gives, if someone's telling you a story where they failed in the past, they can be self-deprecating, which equals funny. They can be really negative and stressful and focus on the problem, which is attention getting. And then they can give you this transformation story, which is teaching, which is learning, which then demonstrates their higher value by showing weakness. They're not saying that they suck in the past in the present, they suck in the past, right? So they suck in the past and they were just totally stressed out and they solve this problem. And now there's both a problem and a lesson in that. And that will easily kill five or 10 minutes. And if you're stuck at that point, then you might even ask about what can we really learn from that? Or what would you do differently? But then as we're getting towards maybe the two thirds or near the end point of our podcasting conversation, then if you need a go to question or so, I would ask about their own personal struggle. So maybe that was like a story of blip in time, but I say like, what have you really learned? Or what brought you from that story where you're way in the past until up to now? And even if maybe that doesn't quite fit, a little spit on that is what has surprised you recently? What have you learned recently about your industry? And unexpected surprises are always a lot of fun, right? Because it shows learning and growth and adventure and all those other sorts of things. And so to recap so far, the library in my head of questions is elevator pitch. Where are people stuck? You try to pick up the thread. You ask for a case study. You ask about their own struggle or unexpected occurrences. And then near the end here, we ask for a URL or a call to action. And I don't always phrase things the same as you can tell, but I phrase the near the end point more or less like this. 
you've given us many amazing lessons, stories, and advice from what you've delivered to us here in this podcast episode. But some people maybe want to take the next step with you now that they've heard your advice and they've been really impressed by what you've taught us today. How can someone get in touch with you and contact you? How does somebody know if their company is the right size or the ideal fit to do business with you? And if they are the right fit, how do they reach out and contact you and take the next step? What is the call to action? And so this does a few things, right? This makes everything that we've talked about before lead to something because there has been quite a mix, right? There's been mistakes and lessons and stories. And then this is all leading to if, if you liked having Tim Ferriss on our show, then the next thing you'll want to do is go and pick up the four hour work week, right? Because this guest has demonstrated some value. And if there are these listeners that really click, that really connect with this guest, then the next logical step is to go to that website or go to that LinkedIn page or get that book or whatever sort of next step they have to give to you. And my own uh, personal way of doing things, which I think is the right way, is we ask for this. And they might list a few URLs, but there's probably a main URL. And I keep it in my head, this URL to, to repeat. And if it's a long one, I think what's the first letter, but I really do my hardest to try to memorize the quick URL that they just delivered to us. And then what I do then is after they've done their sales pitch and sold us, then I say, now that we're wrapping up, it would mean a lot to me if you could give us a quote or lesson that has helped you out in your journey quite a bit. It can either be a business lesson or something related to your personal life. But what comes to mind when I ask you for a quote or lesson that has helped you that can really help and usually this puts someone on the spot, but you see how I do like a lengthy question. I answer it, maybe two, or ask it two or three times. That way the gears can be turning in their head and they can at least think of, oh, here's this Henry Ford quote or something. So then they, they answer with the quote and they explain it. And many times the magic happens here. Many times they just maybe through like panic or stress, the quote relates to the lessons that we've talked about. And even if... If something pops into mind for you, you can be like, oh, you said that quote. And that reminds me of when you said this earlier in our conversation. So that quote, it does not have to tie everything together, but it's a great method that I've used to end with a bang instead of a whimper. And then after they explain that quote and they get the relevance, then you again, repeat their website URL back to them and their audience. That way you're like together promoting or endorsing the person's website and the, the person's message. And one thing I want to throw out here is like, I don't take notes when I do podcasting. I used to have a piece of paper and they'd be talking, I'd be looking down and scribbling. And when I'm a guest on shows like that, I hate that because when someone's looking down at writing, it's, they're not listening to me or do I keep talking? Do I wait until they're done writing? Do your best to be on video, maintain eye contact, do all the cheesy stuff like like nod and make, make exaggerated facial expressions, even though it seems really weird, but it's just your way of communicating back to the person that this is interesting and exciting that you're listening. And you also have to figure that this is going to be on the recording. Someone else, if they're watching this really enthusiastic guest doing all kinds of talking and dancing and you're just slumped over, then that's not exciting. And I had this aha when I visited Japan, and if you turn on the weather channel in Japan, there's a little guy uh, holding sticks in the corner who's dancing because in Japan, they figure the weather channel is so boring that they need a dancing man in the corner in order to keep you entertained as the watcher. So think about that. If someone's just scrolling YouTube and you want to keep them engaged and energized with your desk, you don't have to be doing dancing, but at least smile and nod and make more exaggerated facial expressions than you think you would and definitely don't take notes. And mistakes that you can make when you are, are doing a podcast is do your best to not get annoyed at your guests. This is a puff piece. This is your way of making them look really good and do your best to agree with what they're saying. And if, if something really clashes with you morally, then try to find a way to change the subject. I'm not asking you to compromise your morals. 
but do your best to be an encourager and don't really argue or tell your guests that they're wrong. They are there to deliver some value. The next thing I would keep in mind is the, the, the pace or the rhythm. And that means that what annoyed me early on with having podcast guests was not quite catching on that some people answer in 30 second answers and some people answer in five minute answers or even maybe 10 minute answers. And so you have this 20 or 30 minute podcast interview and you're so stressed out because how will I fill 20 minutes? I have these 10 questions ready. But if you think about it, if you asked someone 10 questions, they could really only answer in about a, a minute and a half. And a, a sentence is about 10 seconds. So that would be nine sentences. That'd be like a little paragraph for every question that you ask. But sometimes you go off on a tangent, you have uh, additional things to say. And I would just, before I caught on to this, I would get so annoyed because I would either be like having to drag all these answers out from a person, or I would say one thing and I couldn't get a word in and either one's okay. That's just the person's natural rhythm. You just want to make sure to move things along and do your best to speak less than your guest. which if you're a podcaster, maybe you're a talker, maybe that's difficult. And it's also important if someone tells your story, oh, hey, my dog died. Be really careful about saying, oh, hey, my, my cat just died last week. It's a really fine balance. But if someone tells you something, then it's okay to, to relate in, in a little bit and then use that as like curiosity to ask them more. But be really careful if someone tells you something cool and you like you hijack it and you one up uh, on them. I think I was on a podcast once and I held up a book and it was just some book cover. And the host was like, oh, I make book covers way better than that. And I was like, now things are awkward. And your podcast is not awkward, even if you think it is. Uh, some people you'll, you'll click better with than others, but it's it's a quick 20 or 30 minutes and you're in and you're out and you owe it to yourself and your guests and your audience to make it the best that it can be. And that's why you need to bring your A game and ask some of these interesting questions. Ask your guest about their journey and make the story itself that you tell the journey and make them look good. And one, one final sort of secret I'm really hesitant to share with you because that's giving away the game is this idea called mirroring. And what that means is you should do your best to act like your guest a little bit. And that can mean whatever it means for you. The other day, someone came on a podcast and they are wearing a jacket. And I look over in my closet, which is off camera there, and there was a jacket and I, I put on a jacket. That way we were a couple of guys there wearing jackets. If you notice that your guest answers in little short questions, then asking little short questions and vice versa. If it's long questions, then in your response, give them a longer answer to prepare, to let them prepare for their next five or 10 minutes response to your next question. If you notice that your guest maybe talks high or talks low or talks fast or talks slow or use certain words, then lean into that a little bit and find a way to compliment your guests if possible. If they said something that's really cool and really useful, just be honest, say it was really cool and really useful. And if they say like a keyword or a joke, and it's possible for you to quickly pick up on that and mirror that right back to them, it's just something to keep in mind just to meet your guests where they're at. And if you're not familiar with this or you haven't done it or you haven't know it, and it gets done to you all the time. I guarantee every day, people are mirroring you where they, they realize it or not. And so if you can consciously, deliberately, first of all, get over the idea that it is weird to, to mirror a person, but meet them where they're at and just be, give yourself off in a similar way that they do to make it easier for everyone. That way the, the conversation gels and it flows. And that way, again, your audience is not listening to one really hyper person and one really slow person. Just do your best to meet your person where they're at and have a lot of fun on these podcast questions. I'll recap one final time those list of questions that way you can get it. Ask for their elevator pitch. Ask where are people stuck. Try to pick up the thread. Ask them for a case study. Ask about their own unexpected struggle. Ask for their call to action URL. And then ask for a quote or lesson and recap their URL again. And hey, 
now that we got you over this hump of what to say in a podcast, how to do it, do you think you could knock out 10 of these or 100 if you contacted all sorts of people in your industry over time, especially if all you had to do was show up, but you're in luck because DFY Podcast is the exact website you need to go to right now to be the kind of podcaster that just shows up. We'll edit your show and add music and put it on your podcast platforms and social media platforms, etc. Just show up and just use this sort of conversation framework as a guide to steer you in the right direction. That way you can have these natural conversations. That way you don't have to think and overthink too much. You can just show up, get your networking, your joint venturing in, get some content from some experts and do them a favor by getting your traffic back out to them. Create your podcast, continue your podcast, have fun with your podcast, dfypodcast.com. This is Robert Plank.